a couple from Belgium. Living in Cayman says the people closest to them are safe, but that coming from a small country, they know of people who were at the attack sites and are continuing to monitor the situation. And normally I never check Facebook at night when I wake up because then I know I can't sleep anymore. Ellen Colarts and Michael Maas were born and raised in Antwerp, but left eight years ago doing films and photography around the world. They say the attacks weren't a major surprise because years ago, Belgian politicians allowed large-scale immigration without addressing the cultural friction that has led to animosity, crime, and now this. We, we all knew something was going to happen. It was only a matter of when and how. They say the answer isn't closing Belgium's borders or forcing immigrants to get rid of all their cultural norms, but to have tolerance both ways for hosts and guests. Belgium is still a good country. It has very nice people and it's innocent people that are just, yeah, their life changed like this. Ellen and Michael go on to say that with both NATO and the European Union having major facilities in Belgium, they know terrorism has always been a possibility as well. Cayman's finance industry may get caught in a tug of war between two financial giants going in different directions. Cayman 27's Pat Kreitlau describes how our bankers and borrowers are caught between two continents. On the one hand, the U.S. recovery is well underway to the point where the Federal Reserve is contemplating a hike in interest rates. But because the Cayman dollar is pegged to the U.S. dollar, it would mean the price to borrow money here would also go up. This disconnect is likely to cause some hurt in Cayman Islands because unless you live on a rock, you know that there are some serious employment issues in Cayman Islands. People are not feeling rich. Mr. Gosh says Cayman banks charge 3% or more above the U.S. Federal Reserve rate, so a Fed hike will make mortgages and car loans more expensive. In the context of Cayman, uh, the hedge funds and the private equities, which largely use Cayman structures, are looking for ways to invest outside of the traditional sources. So higher interest to borrow money locally, lower interest to save in traditional banks, has money watchers in Cayman paying attention to a tale of two cities. Frankfurt on Thursday, Washington next week. Pat Kreitlow, Cayman 27. The Premier says the investigating officer behind Operation Tempura is trying to blackmail him and the country, essentially, for hush money. Premier Alden McLaughlin angrily took to the floor of the Legislative Assembly today to confirm reports that a letter and an email had been sent to him by Martin Bridger threatening to expose what he said is never-before-revealed information about corrupt behavior by several Cayman officials unless the Premier negotiates a settlement with him. Cayman 27's AccuWeather forecast is brought to you by Burger King, home of the Whopper. Tale of two days, here's the nice weather going away, here's the cloudier weather and the rain making its way to our islands, coming just off Jamaica right now where it has been a mostly rainy afternoon. We look at live Doppler radar right now from the airport. It tells us that we can see that band of rain starting to make its way toward us. Again, Sister Islands first, Grand Cayman second, and then it's a question of whether it just moves along or if it sits for a while. The folks at the National Weather Service tell us they think by Friday morning this thing will be moving on, hopefully giving us a very nice weekend. So taking a look at our sun and tides for today. Cayman 27's Pat Kreitlow joins us now to wax poetic about this more leisurely period. I first thought about it from my favorite beach spot. Had I fired off a cannon, not a soul would be shot. Then I had to park farther from something I'd been craving, because apparently this is the season to do your repaving. Slow season hampers the culinary arts, and there'll be no more golfing this month in these parts. But storm season's tough on any eatery. Customers don't like the idea of being swept out to sea. So you fix the place up for your next connoisseurs, or you could be a more risk-taking entrepreneur. Paul Whammer kept open his place Macabuca and last year avoided a money-losing bazooka. In the past, they would close to customers' consternation. Uh, everybody took their vacation. We did some renovations. The experiment worked, though you wouldn't call it raucous. And it ended up being a pretty decent month and actually shocked us. Kathy Belter came down for a little roof raising. It's because my friend's happy place. She says it's amazing. 
So hoist up a bottle, Kathy. Feel free to stretch out. Enjoy the views, like this water spout. Or the acres of beaches and seas all unmanned. Just don't go and tell Tammy. I don't want to get canned. Pack right low. Came in 27.